forgot I was muted. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Okay, good. So your audio is working. We can hear you. We can see you. So, so far, so good. Yay. That never happens for me. I know, right? <laughs> Maybe you being at the hospital for it to yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I was just confirming with Mary to make sure um, she's kind of, I think, in limbo right now. So... I think we should be able to go ahead and get started. So I was just going to give a little quick intro to make sure everybody knows what we're doing today. And then I will let um, you and then Mary get started. Okay, that sounds great. All Hopefully right. She, well, because she has our, our slides. <laughs> yeah, if not, I've got them on backup. I have them pulled up on my computer just in case. So hopefully okay. we can we can get through it. So. Well, hello and welcome everyone to part two of the Cute Syndrome Meaningful Change series. My, in case you're new to our SCNAA family, my name is Casey Craig. I'm the mom to Miss Stella, and I'm so excited to host today's meaningful event, um, change or a meaningful change event. Um, you know, I was really thinking about this, and Stella's first three, three years of life were really rough, um, to say the least. I remember a very distinct moment in 2018 that I realized we, that we were merely surviving. We were barely making it through the day that I couldn't even think about what a good life looked like with SCNAA. It was then I had this paradigm shift of thinking that about our life with SCNAA, and I wanted to start living our best life, which leads me to today's event. So we have two incredible mothers and advocates here with us today. We have Mary Turner and our very own Heather Crowley. Both work for Missouri Family to Family, and today they're holding a one-hour workshop for us to discuss an easy-to-use tool from charting the life course framework. There's actually several different tools within this life course framework, but today we're going to focus on the trajectory tool. So we're going to jump right into today's workshop. So Mary, if you can hear us or see us at this point in time, there should be a button that you can click that says share audio video. And so if you wanna go ahead and come on screen, then as you're doing that, then I'm gonna go over a few housekeeping items. So group interaction through questions and or comments can take place in the chat box to your right. I will keep an eye on this thread for Mary and Heather as they present today. The chat's also an area you can ask for technical help. So I know if um, Megan Varner is going to be on the back end helping with um, technical difficulties if you're having issues. Last but not least, I do wanna thank our lead sponsors, Praxis and Neurocrin. These two sponsorships allow us to keep this important programming going. So we're so thankful for their support. Okay, without further ado, let's see where Mary is. Oh, uh, not see her. Don't think that's her. All right. Mary should be up. You might text her. I think she's having some difficulties. Okay. She said she thinks she's in, but she's not seeing anything. Okay. Oh, I don't know if. I have her phone number. Do you mind to let her know to refocus? Oh, oh, there she oh, is. There she is. is. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> speak of the devil. <laughs> so I have Mary Turner and we have Heather Crowley here. And um, like I alluded to at the very beginning, so Heather's actually in true SNA warrior mama fashion at St. Louis Children's Hospital as she's kind of trying out some new ventilator equipment with Tate that we're excited to hear about in our group once you figure out if you like it or not. And uh, so, yeah, so we're going to keep kind of start here. Um, do, you, do you guys want to kind of just recap what we're going to do today? Sure. But Casey, before we get started, can you make sure that I'm able to share my screen so that I can get the PowerPoint up? Yeah. So um, do you see those little blocks there? We have um, like underneath the screen, you've got the closed captioning and all that. So when you're ready to share screen, you're going to click on that computer monitor Great. and mm -hmm, then you can share that way. But if for some reason it doesn't work, I do guys have your PowerPoint that I can run it on my end. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So good morning, everybody. My name is Mary Turner. And as you guys know, Heather Crowley is actually you probably don't know how important she is in my life, uh, but I am the director of Missouri Family to Family. 
Um, and we are a resource center housed within UMKC Institute of Human Development. And we provide resources, linkages for um, individuals and family members that have um, global disabilities and special health care needs. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we when I get into the presentation. Today, what we're really hoping that you guys will do is sort of take a deep breath and embrace a moment with us and talk about a good life and how you um, actually stop and think about how to create a good life for yourself and your family. So I feel very privileged to be here with you today and I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to spend some time with you. Um, we hope that you'll enjoy this and, and walk away with some tools for your life and building a good life for yourself and your family. Um, I'll introduce myself really quick as Mary gets her screen share going. Um, most of you probably know me. I'm very active in our parent support group. Um, but it, like Casey said, this wouldn't be an SCA day family thing if I wasn't sitting in a hospital right now. So it is kind of crazy, but that is our life. And that's actually kind of what we're going to talk about today. So Mary can go ahead and get started. And I am just a sidekick um, jumping in here and there to share my two cents. Uh, so Heather, can you see the screen, the PowerPoint? I can't yet. Can you, Casey? Okay. I cannot. Would it, be too, would it be easier? I can totally just bring it up. That way you guys can see each other. And then you can tell me when you want to move on to the next slide. Do you want to do that? Be, That's Casey, great. that would be lovely. Thank you Let's so much. That. that way we can just take that worry off of your guys' plate. <laughs> we'll see if I can... I mean, I readily admit that I'm a technical misfit and Heather keeps me going all the time. So I appreciate that. No worries. Can you guys see this okay? Yes, we That's can. Perfect. Fantastic. So you just let me know when you want me to go to the next slide because I can't see you, but I can see the PowerPoint. Go ahead to the next slide. Okay. Well, I think. Here we go. There we go. So I think one of the most critical parts of this presentation is for you guys to know that I've walked a little bit of your path. Um, I am a mom who has a, a daughter who actually sits in the office with me today. She's 35 years old and she has global disabilities. Um, and I've already mentioned, uh, in addition to being the mom of my amazing daughter, I also have another daughter who is 36 years old Yes, we had them very close together. That's a story for another day. Um, she is an apple that did not fall far from my tree. Um, she, like me, she's a social work, clinical social worker, and she actually works at UMKC Institute of Human Development in the field of with individuals that have individual, I'm sorry, individual dis, sorry, disabilities <laughs> and special health care needs. I'll get my tongue working here in just a minute. Um, I already mentioned I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I'm also certified as a co-occurring disorder di diplomat. That really doesn't mean a ton other than I've had a lot of training in trauma, a lot of training in disabilities, and a lot of training in how do we work with those who have IDD and special health care needs and are dual diagnosed with mental health disorders. Um, I'm trauma trained. I have loved working with individuals in the field who come across compassion fatigue, secondary traumatic um, trauma, and spend quite a bit of time working and talking to people because if you are living in the world where you have someone with special health care need, know it or not, you're going to be ex experiencing trauma and it is going to affect you. Um, and I could share several stories of almost having my knees buckled when I've had a wave of trauma hit me from some of the things that we've gone through with Sarah in the past. But there is hope and we're going to build a good life as we go throughout the day. Next slide, please. There's a little bit of delay, delay here. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to talk while it delays. So who's Missouri family to family? We say that we have basically five pillars and our five pillars are, we provide basic information and referral. So a family might call us, they might be moving to Missouri, they may have gotten a new dis diagnosis, they may be at a point in their the life of their family member where they're in a transition stage. It could be that they have a crisis. So they'll pick up the phone, they'll call us and our 
sort of least touch point would be providing them information and resources in their community. The second part of that is what we call navigation or advanced problem solving. That's where the family members might need some a little bit more of a, a hand holding opportunity for our navigators to spend some time with them and really talk through what is the next first step that they need to take. People, when they're faced with medical needs or disability concerns, often get overwhelmed and don't understand what is the next first step. And sometimes we just have to talk to them and calm them down a little bit, help them really identify what is a priority and what they need to do first. And then if we're doing navigation with them, we help them to walk that plan forward. Could be that we spend an hour, could be we spend several weeks with them as they walk, walk through finding the resources that they need for their family members. Then we have peer matching. And I think I should say everyone that is employed within Missouri Family to Family has a lived experience. We have one person who's a sibling of an, an adult individual who has a disability. The rest of us are either mothers or family members who have someone with a special health care need or disability. But one of the most exciting things and most beneficial parts of Missouri Family to Family is we train family leaders who can then become peer mentors and we match the families if they request a mentor with someone who has shared experiences, perhaps live in the same geographic area, perhaps have the same age range, and we that peer mentor will meet with the family members for up to eight weeks, 12 weeks, and even at times up to a year to help them as they walk down this path of learning how to really navigate the system barriers and changes that are going on in their family's lives. It's an emotional connection as well as a system and resource connection. I already mentioned advocacy and leadership, which is what our peer mentors are. So we have formal training for our peer leaders. The idea behind that, and Heather's actually had the opportunity to do this, is to prepare them to be able to sit on committees or boards or have a voice with the legislative body to really talk about some of the issues that our families face um, so that they can hear it from a family member's perspective and perhaps make policies and procedures that are most important for the families that the individual agencies, doctors, hospitals, legislators might be serving. And then finally, we have educational opportunities that we provide very similar to what we're doing today. Next slide, please. So let's get into the meat of the topic today. So what is charting the life course? Charting the Life course actually started out over 20 years ago at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And it was originally a doctorate dissertation by Shelley Reynolds, who's the senior director of, Missouri, of the IHD. She oversees all of the Missouri programs. She is the sibling of an adult individual with a disability. And she began to really take a look at the individual service plans of individuals and started to say, there's something missing here. And what she noticed was missing was the voice of the person who has a disability or special health care need or the voice of the family. So the plans were primarily developed by the system providers versus by the individuals that it was affecting. And so Shelly spent a lot of time. She created a, a very significant team and the life course tools were created. And now not only are they used for family members, they're actually used throughout the, the nation and somewhat internationally, we're beginning to have an international footprint for system change. And you'll understand this as we move along a little bit forward. So really the core belief is that all people have the right to live, love, work, play, and pursue their own, pursue their own life and their own, own good life plan in the community in which they live. So it's really about having different conversations. It's about a different way of thinking. It's encouraging high expectations for you and your family and having life experiences to move you to, on a trajectory toward your own good life. It's not only for professionals to use, although sometimes that often is what an individual service plan becomes. 
It's really about the tools. It's not a program. Excuse me. It's not just tools. It's about a life choice and being able to help you create some life um, plans for yourself. It's focusing on all people, regardless of the age, ability, or their family connections or family roles. It is a, a mechanism to help you envision what you want for yourself and your life. So next slide, please. I already mentioned to you what our core belief is, and that is that all people have the right to live, love, work, play, and pursue life aspirations in their communities. And if you're dealing with someone with a special health care need, sometimes that becomes very stifled. Sometimes it becomes stifled because of stigmatization. Sometimes it becomes stifled because of not being able to necessarily think outside of the box. Maybe it becomes stifled because you are afraid. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later when I talk about my experience raising Sarah directly. But for now, I'd like us to go ahead and move to the next slide and get started in talking about the trajectory. So we believe that individuals and families can focus on a specific life stage whenever they're working on their trajectory, or they can really look at their um, their trajectory from a broader perspective, regardless of the age and regardless of the domain, domains that they're talking about. It's important to have a vision for a good life. It's important to really think about quality of life. It's also important to think about opportunities and experiences to support you as you move along in your life tra tra trajectory in a positive direction. And as you can see, saying trajectory for some reason is a little bit hard for me today. Next slide, please. It's a tongue twister for sure. It is a tongue trick twister. <laughs> so now we want to do a little bit of an experiment. And Casey, can you pull up the, the um, Minty, get that ready for us, Minty meter? Now, can you see this or do you still see your slide? I see my slide. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is, uh, here, hold on one second. Right. So I think it's going to be a little bit trickier for me to go back and forth um, unless I, you know what, let me do this. So as Casey's getting us ready, I'm going to talk to you for a couple minutes, if you don't mind. Is that okay, Casey? Absolutely. Okay. So I want you guys to take a breath again, and I want you to think about what do you want for a quality of life? The future is not something that we enter into. It's something that we create. So if you're thinking about how you want to create something for your future that requires you to make a choice and a decision, it often begins with a, a vision. So please go to Minty Meter, M-E-N-T-I-M-E-T-E-R.com. If you guys will actually look in the chat, I copy and pasted the link. So you guys can just click on the link and go straight to the website that we're trying to get you to. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. And you can go ahead and explain further what they're okay. going to do. So once you get into if the anybody Mentimeter, has trouble, just type in the chat box. We'll help you out. Thanks. Um, Heather, did you put the code in the chat also? Um, they won't need it with the one I sent out. Okay, perfect. So you're going to go to the Minty Meter and you guys are going to answer this question. What is your vision for a good life? You can put in one word, you can put in multiple words. First, I want you to think about if you have a vision for what you want, what would that be? Type it in and pretty soon the words will start popping up. And just making sure you guys can see the minty meter on your screen right now, right? I can. Okay, good. Screen's pretty quiet. Are you guys able to get into it? Casey, you might try to reload that page and see if it refreshes that way. I 
Ta-da. Okay, so here's what I see. Wanting to be financially secure. I think there said something about relaxation, peace of mind, your child's happiness, joy, flexibility, fellowship, being happy, being healthy, free, no worries for others. I'm going to refresh again, see if we have anything else pop up. Happy, safe, smiles, self-sufficient. Healthy is something that is, you can see that it's bold, which really says whenever you're dealing with a minty meter, that that's what is, has been typed in more than once. So it's pretty prominent on everyone's mind. Now let's move down and let's think about what you don't want. So think about in your own life, you'll go to the same minty meter. When you, when you, what might you not want for your life? Um, is that one Casey. working for everyone? I'm not sure. I. Is it working for everybody? I'm not able to see the chat with screen the screen sharing right now. I'm trying to get there. Yeah. Um, so that one isn't working for people. I'm sorry. That's okay. Maybe Heather, they could just put in the chat what yeah, they don't that, want. Yeah. If you want to just type some words into the chat, if you feel comfortable with your name being attached to it, um, for some reason, it's not loading our second page that well. So. I'll start off with um, just talking about my three words as people kind of brainstorm. Um, you know, <laughs> hospital stays is one, which we make the best of it, but um, things I don't want in my life is hospital stays. Um, I don't want Tate to um, be disconnected. I don't want, um, I don't want to be lonely and depressed um, anxiety. Those are the things that I, I don't want. And I really try to, um, focus my trajectories on getting away from that. And I know COVID has been a big player the last couple of years in some of these things that we don't want because our lives are already hard enough to get to what we do want. And then COVID comes and just like crashes over us and pushes us further and further away from the things that we were trying to achieve. So, um, that has been a big thing in our life. So I'll share mine and then we'll kind of read the chat. So Sarah, as you know, is an adult, but right now, right now her neurosurgeon is a pediatric neurosurgeon. And fortunately for me, he's um, amazing um, and has for us, I should say for Sarah, he has not canceled her as a patient. Um, and I, I actually had a requester at Missouri Family to Family the other day that was saying that because her child has aged out and is no longer an adolescent, she can no longer, he can no longer go see the doctor that he's seen for years. And, and I'll share a little bit more, but Sarah has had 21 shunt revisions. Um, one time she had MRSA in her brain. So having a new doctor provides me such anxiety. I can't hardly catch a breath thinking about that. So I don't want that for my child. I also don't want her stigmatized into thinking that she can't do things just because she has special health care needs or that she has a disability. Those are sort of my two big things. The third thing is I'm not a young chicken anymore. So I, I also don't want my kid to suffer. So I think about as I age, how am I going to provide appropriate supports for Sarah as we are getting older and, and know that she'll have a lifetime of needing someone to be supportive of her. So people are starting to type in the chat. Um, we have isolation, confusion, stress, uncertainty, being overscheduled, frequent hospitalizations, feeling trapped at home, 
isolation, exhaustion again. Um, and then Karen Varner uh, is probably similar to your age, Mary. She says that transition has been hell for them too. And then lack of help, anxiousness, not having choices to do what you want to do is I think what she was getting out there. Um, so those are all really great answers that I think we can all mm -hmm. uh, relate to. <laughs> Absolutely. So as we get ready to move on to, and you can go back to the PowerPoint for me, Casey, as we get ready to go on, move on to how do we create a trajectory for our good life, you can see it's often easier to start with what I don't want. Um, what, what are the things that cause me to pause, that cause me to be a little bit afraid? And if you start with that perspective and go ahead and move. Oh, no, you're on the right screen. I'm sorry. Um, okay. If you start with that, no, yep. go, go ahead I need, and go forward. Yeah. To the cloud. Okay. So we talked about what we don't want, and we can see that it's easier sometimes to come up with the negative than it is to come up with the positive. So, next slide, please. Keep going, Casey. There you go. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I think are important to me is my friends, my family, having enough money, um, a job that I like, one that I can get up every day and go to and feel good about. Um, I'm fortunate that I'm blessed to have a home. Um, I have a deep faith. Um, I like to take vacations. Sometimes I don't do enough self-care and take vacations. And I will tell you for the first seven years of Sarah's life, every vacation ended up in the emergency room. Sometimes, sometimes we wonder why we were taking a vacation. You know, it's not, you know, it's great to get airlifted from a lake to a hospital that's hundreds of miles away from the rest of your family. But mm -hmm. that's part of, of dealing with the, someone that has a special special health care need. We've all I been like, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I like health to be able to have choices. I appreciate having my health. Um, and I like the freedom. And I think all of us can share those same things. Some of the things that maybe we don't want is we don't want to experience po poverty. We don't want ourselves or our family members to experience abuse because of stigmatization or um, even stereotypes or misunderstanding because doctors aren't necessarily trained um, as deeply as they might need to be to serve our family members. Um, I don't want to feel like I don't have a sense of purpose and I certainly don't want to be isolated. And sometimes living with a child with special health care needs, you do feel very isolated. Next slide, please. The other thing that I think that we um, sometimes worry about is that doctors and service coordinators and maybe vocational rehabilitation employees or teachers or counselors sometimes have more power. Feel It feels like they have more power than we have. So let me tell you just very little bit about my sweet Sarah. As you can see, Sarah started out, um, well, she was born at one pound, 13 ounces and got down to one pound, eight ounces. Um, she was in the hospital for very many, many months. Um, and when people would look at and describe Sarah, they would describe her as failure to thrive, or they would say, she will never be home, uh, be normal, excuse me. I actually had one doctor tell me that we should institutionalize Sarah. I won't go into details about how that conversation went with that doctor. Let's just say I might have been a little bit of a mother bear about that. Um, people describe her as having intellectual disabilities. They describe her as requiring needing lots of support. Obviously, I mentioned she has hydrocephalus, so she's medically fragile. She is um, legally blind and she has severe hearing impairments. For the first year of her life, we had oxygen in the house and we had an apnea monitor. And I was terrified to do simple things like have a birthday party where there was candles on the cake. However, then we began to see Sarah in a different, we always saw Sarah in a different light, but she loves to ride horses. She loves her dad. She loves her, her siblings. That's us um, on our Christmas baking day where the three kids are standing there in their matching aprons. 
that kid could eat more pasta and spaghetti than anybody else I knew. And you can see her with her older cousins. Um, she's getting ready to go on a date. She was going to prom. And of course they had to do what every older brother type figure does is to give the guy she's going out with a little bit of a hard time. So we see Sarah as a normal human being with normal needs. Next slide, please. So this is Sarah's trajectory. And it's what, where I want you to start thinking about the trajectory for your own life. When she was going to school, I remember it was probably when we, she was in kindergarten. Or kindergarten. Um, we weren't particularly satisfied with the school system and the services that they were provided because they, I won't go into a lot of detail about that. I will just say that, that they kept t treating her as if she had special needs. She did. I'll agree that she did. But we also had a belief that she was only going to rise to the level that we asked her to or that her teachers asked her to. So we managed to go through the IEP process. We didn't agree with the IEP. And so we had to have a mediation, which resulted in us winning. Um, and But I remember the principal saying to me, Mary, if you decide to make this decision to move Sarah into this different school, you're going to have to accept the responsibility for that. And I stopped and thought to myself, or you're going to have to accept the responsibility for Sarah. And I thought, I cocked my head and I thought of all kinds of different things that I was going to say. And I said, I believe I accepted that responsibility when I gave birth to her or when I conceived her. So it's okay. Let's go ahead and sign this IEP. But people wanted to keep her locked in, which would not have resulted in a good life for her. Sometimes moving to a new city was hard for us because she needed all kinds of services that we had to then work on getting um, her enrolled in and getting her eligible for. Um, we, we had some inexperienced medical teams that caused some critical errors in her care. And so what we didn't want is we didn't want to re be reliant on others for medical care. We wanted to be the experts on her care. We didn't want to be taken advantage of. We didn't want to be bored or have low, Sarah to have be bored or have low self-esteem. And she did not want others to make all of the decisions for her. So in thinking about the good things that happened in Sarah's life, she had excellent PTOT when she was younger. She was part of the family. She does laundry. She cooks meals. She takes care of the dogs. There was really not a whole lot that we allowed her to get away with. She was involved in church programs, church plays. Um, she went to Kansas School for the Blind a couple of summers and actually got to go on a trip to Oregon twice along the um, Oregon Trail. She will tell you she didn't like eating peanut butter and jelly all the time when they didn't cook meals that she liked over the open fire. Um, she began to identify her own symptoms. So last week we had a shunt malfunction, turned out to not be a diff as difficult as some of them have been in the past, but she can now articulate to us, it's this kind of shunt um, malfunction versus an emergency shunt malfunction, which is super great that she's been able to embrace that with her own life. She went to the base program in Springfield. They have a program where instead of going through a typical school day, individuals who have um, intellectual disabilities are put into a business program. So she got to work at um, Mercy Hospital. It was St. John's at the time. And she was volunteering in the kitchen. She volunteered in the laundry. She did some supply distribution and really created some work ethics and skills for herself. She also volunteers at the Humane Society. She goes out on dates. Um, and currently she is enrolled in the um, Partners in Policy Making within Missouri as one of the self-directed, um, self-advocates in that program, learning a lot. And, and two weeks ago, maybe, excuse me, three weeks ago, she actually went and talked before the legislative body. All of these things are helping Sarah to move towards her own independence. She was married. It didn't work. So Sarah has experienced being married and divorced um, and the heartache that goes along with that. 
She loves working with animals and kids, and she is very close to her family. That's the trajectory of what Sarah wanted and what we wanted for her in her life. Next slide. So now here's when you guys get to begin thinking about your own trajectory and the things that you want for your own life. So how the tool is organized, this tool is the trajectory is your visual tool. It's organized in two major sections. One is the vision and experience. The vision section is on the right hand side and is further broken down into what is wanted and what is not wanted. The experience boxes on the left and middle are organized by past experiences and moving forward. It's an easy format uh, for organization of information. It's a way to help you to think about and, and enable your own personal discussions or reviews about your current and future trajectory. There's no right or wrong answer or order to follow when you're completing these tools. The, it should be focused on what you want for yourself and what your family member wants, what the goals are, what the wishes are, what the desired outcomes are. Hey, we Mia, also hope, yes. I was gonna ask real quick, do you have, I guess this could be like full life or could you look at maybe just like one year ahead? Like, I guess, I don't know, just do you have any suggestions on that? Actually, Casey, I'm glad you asked that because um, Heather did one and we're gonna show hers. Heather, do you, do, I think we should yep. move ahead and show Tate's yeah. first. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and go. If you'll click um, two slides ahead, Casey. And then we might go back to the tips, Mary, if that's okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Is this what you're wanting right here, Heather? Uh, my screen hasn't caught up yet. Mary, is it on goals for Tate 2022? Uh, it has yes, yeah, it okay. is. Okay, sorry. My, sometimes mine's a little bit slower than your guys's. But okay, well, I'll go ahead and talk in, talk about mine as long as you're you guys are seeing it. Um, so, as a parent, there it comes for me. So, as a parent with um, a child that has high level of medical needs, I feel like I was bombarded with all kinds of um, paperwork and things to fill out. And honestly, to be one hundred percent honest, when I was first given this stuff. I dismissed it because I had so much to do already that I didn't have time to sit down and fill out more paperwork or more things. Um, a lot of things that we're given aren't really that helpful. So why waste my time? But it was when I started my new job a couple of years ago that I really dove into what these tools are. And it was life changing because I'm like, these are actually, you know, whenever you have a patient or a parent with a new diagnosis, I want to be like, this is the things that you should do and this is the things you should ignore. And I would give them a list or I would give them a trajectory of things that they need to do. Um, so I have filled out several of these. Um, sometimes I fill it out broadly for like what I want in the future. As a mom of a three-year-old that can't really do much, I hate thinking about the future and I don't want to go too far in the future because it scares me because mm -hmm. we don't have answers about Kate's life, Kate's prognosis or anything. So I'm not personally going to look even five years in the future because I, I mentally can't. I'm not in the headspace that that's okay for me to look that far yet. So I like to do my trajectories in a more sh short term kind of atmosphere. So what I do is I problem solve with trajectories um, for different things that come up. And then I like to fill one out every once in a while. Um, I usually do a yearly trajectory for Tate. And I started this in 2020. So I filled out one or two other ones for Tate already. And I will say last year, when I looked back at all my goals, I hit them all, which subconsciously, I guess I just knew what was on my goal list and we actually hit them all for 2021. Um, so I sat down and filled out a goals for Tate for 2022. Whenever you look at the right hand side, the vision for what I want, I have, I want to help Tate communicate with either buttons, eye gaze, just find some kind of system that works for him. I would like him to work on independent sitting. I want a good balance of therapy days, doctor's appointments, 
versus days at home. I get stressed out and Tate gets stressed out if we have um, too many days of just nonstop appointments and no like fun time or downtime scheduled. Um, I want, I wanted a smooth transition from first steps to our school-based therapy that happens this year. I want to participate in more activities. My goal would be to go on a vacation in 2022, not knowing what that looks like. We haven't really got to vacation as a family of four yet. And then I wanted to attend church regularly. What I don't want is I don't want to have any hospital stays. Spoiler alert, we're here right now. <laughs> Um, it was planned though, right? At least it's not a bad planned. one. This was a good one, but still, yeah. we're here. Um, I don't want Tate to lay supine all day and not be moved around and to do things. I think it's easy whenever you have a non-mobile kid to, um, I don't. It, it maybe it just happens at my house, but it feels like you just leave them in the same spot, or people tend to not want to bother them and. They don't do a lot. And that really bothers me as a parent, thinking that he might be bored or he might want to do something. But because it's inconvenient to move him and takes more time, that we just don't do it. Um, I don't want Tate to miss out on opportunities just because it's hard to bring him. I don't want to continue to struggle with the car seat because he hates that. And I don't want to continue to be stuck at home because of COVID-19. So those were my wishes and then the things I don't want. And then in mine, I broke it down into life experiences that did not work for us and life experiences that did and a few goals we could do moving forward. So I'll kind of go through this a little quickly, but um, in therapies, we have started offering different switches and buttons. We're trying several different ones because I do have that goal of communication. So that's something I've already implemented this year. Um, I try not to schedule more than like two or three appointments a week because I want Tate to have days that are fun days instead of just doctor days. Um, I try to get outside daily when the temp is above 60. That's kind of a mindset. I, uh, <laughs> I put a very specific thing on there so that it would remind me that if it's nice, go outside. Don't just sit inside because <laughs> that's what we're used to. Um, I wanted to brainstorm vacations and maybe we could do something closer to home, something that could be enjoyable for Tate as well as the rest of the family. That's something that is very important to me. I grew up going on a lot of vacations. And so that is a vision of my good life. And in my mind, I want my family to be able to experience that. But Tate makes it very hard to travel. For all of you that have a lot of medical equipment in your life, you would understand this. But um, I will say, as of about an hour ago, we booked a condo for our first Florida vacation with Tate. So Yay! we are going this year. So honestly, when you write down a goal, it just makes it, I don't know. It just makes it, it just changes it for me where mm -hmm. it might be a wish, but then whenever I write it down, I write, it turns into a goal and it makes me really, really push to achieve those things. And how nice is it to have something to look forward to? It is. And then, um, you know, we wanted to get back in church. We'd been out of that practice for a while. And once you fall out of something, it's hard to get back in it. But we um, took a break over the winter. And about three weeks ago, we started attending church again. Um, you know, we it changes. We don't sit in our normal church spot anymore. We sit at the front, kind of away from people a little bit. Um, but Tate was able to... He was awake this week and got to participate in the penny march with the other children. His older brother mm -hmm. pushed his wheelchair and hooked his bucket over over his wheelchair. And people were dropping money in his collection bucket. And ev I got so many messages after church. We were so happy to see Tate. We were so happy to see him smiling. So um, just little small things add up to having a good life. I mean, something as simple as my child getting to do the penny march at church was a huge thing that we achieved this week. Um, and so then things that I don't want, um, the glo or things that have maybe gotten in the way of achieving a good life, I would say global pandemic, people having poor hand hygiene. Um, we, be, we have trouble with like large events. We don't really attend large events where there's a lot of people in a small area. Um, we have to really think about what we're doing. We try to do outdoor activities. 
or things that we know are going to be spaced out. Um, I don't want to skip therapy. We've skipped therapy in the past, just being lazy. And in the long run, that ends up hurting us. Um, And honestly, for me, it's kind of getting out of my own head and realizing that me being so scared of germs for Tate sometimes actually hinders him. So I have to kind of learn to loosen up and change things around. Um, so that's just the kind of how I do. I fill one out every year to six months and kind of update, like, what did we achieve last year and where do we want to go from here? And like I said, the fact that I looked back on my 2021 plan and I met all of my expectations was very eye-opening this year that I'm so glad I wrote it down. And it's really nice to look back and see, like, Sometimes whenever you're in the day-to-day, you don't realize that you're making improvements and making changes until you look back at, like, the larger mm-hmm. picture. So Absolutely. that is my Tate tra- trajectory, and I will let um, – Casey, I think – go ahead and move to my self-care one because I think it's um, – all it of bad? us – yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. That's fine. Keep going. Nope. 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 I think I need to go forward. <laughs> Do I need yeah. to go forward or back? Yeah. For, I mean, this, forward. It's, forward. It's this slide okay. right after my take. Tates. Oh, Mary's self care trajectory? Yes. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Oh, I'm very interested in this. Let's. let's okay. Let's so on. I put this in here because I can relate to some of you and what you guys are going through. But I also realize that. Sometimes if we don't write it down, I don't know if you guys have heard this comment before. If you don't have, without a vision, the people will perish. Okay. So if you think about that, when you think about your good life, the idea behind doing a trajectory, and there's lots of tools that Charting the Life course has, is it gives you a vision so you don't perish. And so I wanted to create a self-care plan, um, Starting a new job is always a little bit challenging. Being a mother of three girls and a wife and um, our sister, my sister lives with me and all of things. You just sometimes don't stop and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I used to be the boss of about 100 people and we would have fun days at work. And I'm talking the office where you're doing the, the office chair races in the hallway and potlucks and all of those kind of crazy things. Um, scavenger hunts with pictures, etc. But having a new staff and, and being able to create a team, I really want to start creating fun days at work. Um, I want to read daily. I'm not talking about therapy manuals or disability manuals or any of that kind of stuff. I want to read mind numbing things or perhaps I am a geek and love to read the encyclopedia, but that's fun for me. Um, <laughs> I do. It's really weird. I like going camping and cooking and working in the dirt. Um, Sometimes you just need to take some time and go to therapy yourself. So perhaps I want to utilize my employee assistant program. I like to clean house. It gives me a sense of of satisfaction, I guess, is the best word. Control probably is the more accurate word. Um, And I like to organize the house. I need to walk every day. So those are some of the things that that I listed that had been past life experiences that I hadn't been doing. So moving forward, I wanted to get into a wellness program. We joined the gym, had a family membership for the gym so everybody can go. Um, I want to create a healthy workplace. I want to be able to say, I'm waving my white flag and I need help. Um, I was super proud of a friend of mine who posted on Facebook that she needed someone to come over and help her do laundry. And I thought that was so brave of her to be willing to say that. I need to communicate my needs, get enough sleep, meet up with my friends. COVID-19 really got us to where we might do virtual meetings, but we didn't do face-to-face meetings and we didn't unplug. So I want to meet my friends regularly, have dinner, have fellowship, take, turn off my phone and be with them. Um, Some of the things that were not great for me in the past is I didn't always manage my to-do list. Um, Sometimes I made my to-do list too long. Um, I would check my emails after work, before work, still working on that one. Um, Not taking my earned vacation. Um, 
because there's all kinds of reasons why we wouldn't do that. I mean, my gosh, people might fall apart if we weren't at our desk answering our calls, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I would take on the workload of other people and not hold them accountable. Um, and I've already mentioned not being willing to wave the white flag. So working too many hours in a week, avoiding my friends, not having enough energy to, to be with them. So what I don't want, I don't want to be disorganized um, when uh, discouraged when I wake up in the morning. I don't want to feel exhausted. I don't want to feel irritated with my clients or my friends or my family. I don't want to be cynical and I don't want to feel a loss of professional efficacy. What I do want, I want to feel energized daily or at least most of the days. I want to start or join a book club. I want to, and by the way, I've already asked some people to do that with me. And I want to plan ahead for annual vacations. I've got some big goals. I want to go to Petra and Alaska and Canada and the Smoky Mountains. I will tell you, I have reserved a camping spot for Mother's Day. So, you know, I'm small steps. Um, I want to be a wife, a mom, an aunt, a friend, a sister that people are drawn to. But I can't if I don't find a way to embrace my good life and my own self-care plan. And most of all, I want to model what I teach. So if I'm doing this, if I'm talking about it, I need to use these tools and I need to be willing to actually use them as a, an example, but also put them into practice in my life. Next slide. Mary, if you don't care, I might jump in on the nice next slide just a little bit, if that's okay. Yes, please. So the, we won't really go through in depth on the next slide. Mary might have something she wants to add in about it, but this, I wanted to add this in, not really to explain it in depth because this is not Mary or I's trajectory, um, but this is actually a trajectory that a family used in order to prepare for an IEP meeting. I know IEP meetings are really stressful for people. It's hard to articulate your thoughts of what you want for your child to the school. So writing your things down ahead, maybe making copies and handing it out to the IEP people is a really great place to start because they can actually see what you want for your family before even going into the meeting. So I feel like IEP planning and meeting planning is a very big thing that the trajectory is used for by families. Um, well, I also wanted to answer a question that was in the chat real quick, Mary, if that's okay. Yes, please. Um, somebody had asked how you do a trajectory for a child who isn't able to articulate their own needs. Um, starting that off, if you have a child that is able to articulate their needs, it is really a thing that we really like is maybe they can't fill this out, but maybe sit down with them and ask them, what does a perfect day look like to you? What does a good week, where, what do you want in the future? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have kids? Do you want to go to this school? Do you want to go to church, to college, whatever? Um, and just ask questions and fill one of these out based on what your child's answers are, if they're able to communicate. Because a lot of times you'll find that what a child wants for themselves might be a little bit different than what you want as a parent for your child. With that and then the other... Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. I just wanted to add, sometimes if, if an individual is nonverbal and you can use pictures, so you take a magazine, you cut, cut a bunch of pictures out and have them perhaps point to those pictures to identify um, what they get excited about. So it doesn't have to be all verbal communication. It can be picture led communication as well. Right. Um, and then in my case, like I have a child who really isn't able to communicate anything to me. Um, and that's just the way it is. It sucks, but that's the way it is. Um, so I really just try to put myself in his shoes and think about when I think Tate is the happiest. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, Tate is lazy. His favorite place is to be on our couch, lying down, watching TV on a big screen, and he would lay there for hours and hours smiling ear to ear if I let him. And so that is actually part of my trajectory. If you remember, I put, I want a good balance of therapy and doctor days to days at home because I know Tate's favorite days don't involve going to therapy or going to the doctor or even going to church and stuff. I mean, sometimes he really just wants to stay at home. And so in my case, I can't ask him what he wants, but I can just think about when he's the happiest 
or what things are making him live, lead his best life. Like maybe he doesn't like going to therapy, but he's now able to set up because of therapy. He's now able to push a button for a toy because of therapy. So what things lead him to his happiest self? Thank you. I hope that Heather, answers there... the question. And Mary, you can add anything in that you want to. <laughs> no, I just, I think that's excellent. I didn't know if there was anything more in the chat. I'm not sure. I just wanted to say that I'm so glad you guys mentioned that just these other ways to use the trajectory, you know, you, the self care and I, before IEP meetings, I never even would have thought about that. So that what a great way. Well, and I think it's important also to think about it if you're involved in speech therapy or OT or PT. It's a way to communicate back to the, your um, providers what you're wanting. And so if they can see what, what you want and your family member wants for your good life, then perhaps they can go, oh, I hadn't thought about that. We can mm -hmm. do X, Y, Z. Um, also, and if you live in Missouri, this these tools are supposed to be used pretty much uh, saturated throughout the state for individualized service plan. So your case managers, if you help them see how to use this tool and help guide them, then they can begin to know how to implement plans in the service agree individual service plans for your family member. Yeah. So help them see how to use the tools also. And can we provide um, copies of this for our families where they can actually type yes. into these? I, I was actually going to ask, um, as long as Casey and the executive team is okay with that, following this meeting, I would like to provide you guys with the slides from this meeting. And then I would like to provide you with all the websites where you can find the tools, as well as blank copies of the tools we've provided. Um, you can either print those off. Some people are pen and paper people, and then some people are computer people. Um, we do have fillable um, documents, too, where you can fill it up, out directly on your computer. Absolutely. That sounds fantastic. That'd be great. And I think the some of the important things is it there's no right or wrong way of doing this so don't get locked into this is how mary did it or this is how heather did it get locked into this is to facilitate communication and to facilitate organizing your head and thoughts around what you want for your good life start in the vision one of these for my husband starting his own business i mean it can literally be any anything, anything happening in your life <laughs> yeah now we're getting pretty close to time here, girls. So I wanted to know, do we, is there anything else we want to hit? Uh, just uh, flip on through to the final thoughts. Uh, okay. And we should be wrapping up anyway. Right. So fine. Yeah. Um, try using it for your own life. Sometimes it's easier to start with yourself than it is to start with your child or family member. Again, don't worry about doing it wrong. You know, a trajectory, if you think about it, it's kind of like throwing a football or a dart. Sometimes that football football or dart doesn't go in a straight line. That's okay. Throw the dart and make it happen. Think about different ways that the framework tool can be used. We've sh shared some of those um, and then explore the website that we're going to provide for you later as well. Um, and we do appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Lo would love to come back and talk more about other tools if the opportunity allows and thank you for your patience with my technical difficulties yeah no this was great what like rich information but also things that we can implement right away um heather i love that you kind of admitted that at first you're like i don't have time for this what is this you know and then once you start working on it you're like this is fantastic because we do, we get so inundated with so many forms and so many things, and it's the, just exhausting. The funny thing was, is when I started it for real, I thought, I wish somebody would have told me about this sooner. And then I go back through all my paperwork, and it was in my original NICU packet that the hospital gave me. And I'm like, why did I not see this? Why did I not realize what this was? <laughs> so funny well we were you were on overload right yes. just overload yes. and i think sometimes that once you have to get out of survival mode in order to be able to do this type of stuff 
Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you two so much for being on today. And um, I think, were we going to do a poll? Were, were we going to try for that? Yeah, I think Megan has it ready to launch. Okay, perfect. So if you um, click on the chat box, there's like three different tabs at the top and it says chat, polls, and people. And so if you go to the poll section, there are three different questions that we would like for you guys to answer before we get off today. So if you can just take a couple of minutes there to answer those and submit your responses. I'm doing it right now as we speak. <laughs> Thank you guys. We appreciate and it. We would love, we're gonna talk about this because we would love to be able to implement um, more of these workshops because you guys have more tools to share with us and I think it would be awesome. So we're gonna look at that maybe over in the next couple of months once Meaningful Change Series is over, we can look at getting you guys back and doing another workshop. That sounds great. Awesome. Well, to. thanks everybody. And we will see you next week um, when we're going to talk to, let's see, what's next week? I think it's our financial planner that's going to talk to us about long-term planning financially and some ABLE account information, special needs trust, all that fun stuff. So we will see you next week. And just one more plug. Thank you so much for our sponsored. We have our lead sponsor, Praxis and Neurocrine, so we can continue to give this programming to our families. All right. See y'all next week. Thank you. Bye, everybody.